Howdy y'all, Caleb here. This weekend is the Age of Sigmar World Championship of Warhammer. A, pre a massive event happening in Atlanta, Georgia. And we will see the best of the Age of Sigmar players come together and battle it out. So, I wanted to look at what are the best players bringing for Seraphon. We have seven Seraphon lists coming to this tournament. And... All names that you'll have recognized before, that we've seen lists of before, doing very well at tournaments, winning tournaments. Generally, to get into this thing, you had to win a big GT. So, uh, very experienced players with great lists, and we'll take a look at those. Now, we do have seven Seraphon lists, six of which are Fangs of Sotek, and one, one, Kotal's Claw. So, we'll take a look at those. What, what do they have in common? What are they trying to accomplish and hopefully not give away too many secrets so that um, Seraphon can still do well in this tournament. I'm definitely rooting for all you guys, hoping you do well. The first one I want to look at, we'll look at the Kotal's Claw list first because it's the, the one unique list here for Seraphon. This is run by Dean. We've seen his name pop up quite a few times. He's a very good Seraphon player. And he's taken Kotal's Claw. What a hero taking out a source list to a big event like this. So he's got Kotal's Claw, and uh, he has his Mortal Realm listed here. I'm not sure what that does. Uh, but Grand Strategy, Spellcasting Savant, and Triumph Inspired. So Spellcasting Savant, keeps your you have to keep your Wizard General alive until the end of the game. So his General is the Slon Starmaster, as the General with Command Trait Shaman of the Chill Lands, and his Lore Spell is going to be taken Empowered Celestite. So... I like this setup for a slon in Kotal's Claw because it allows you to get all the stuff from the the um, the GHB spell lore. So you've got Horfrost, you've got um, Merciless Blizzard, and you've got Rupture if you end up running across a, a, a incarnate. So a great command trait for Kotal's Claw because it allows your shot your slon to actually do some stuff where he gets a little limited without this. Uh, you don't really like taking him as your general, but I think in this loadout it's a great idea because it allows him to to be a little bit more effective. So, um, Horfrost and having access to Empowered Celestite is great because you're going to be able to buff lots of different things. So, like on your sword stuff, you're going to want Empower Celestite on the weapons and Horfrost onto uh, like the mounts. So, a very very good combination that you can do to increase rend or make the hits better. Uh, just make your source stuff just a lot more killy. That's an official word, killy. <laughs> um, Merciless Blizzard is just a great deterrent, and since you don't have to take that as a spell, as your spell enhancement here, that gives you access to it from Shaman of the Chill Lands. That's always a great deterrent. Don't come into my castle because I've got, <laughs> I've got Merciless Blizzard uh, primed and waiting for you. Uh, he also has a Skink Oracle on Troglodon, which is an interesting pick here for Kotal's Claw. Um, because you've spent a lot of points here on two big wizard pieces. Uh, a lot of times in Kotal's Claw, you see a lot more source, a lot of melee. He's gone pretty heavy here into the wizards. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna second guess Dean here. He's he's a way better player than I am. So I'm gonna be very interested to see how he plays these these pieces in the Kotal's Claw. Uh, the spell he's taking is Heavenly Frenzy, so that does allow you to get. A lot of extra movement. That kind of makes up for not having Vengeful Defender on a Source General. Uh, you can still get your Agrodons across the board with Heavenly Frenzy. And makes the Troglodon uh, a little bit more useful for what he's going to do. So uh, Troglodon has, you know, it's minus one to hit Aura that it's going to project. Uh, it is a pretty tanky monster. It's very hard to kill in Kotal's Claw at minus one damage. It's going to always be healing itself. And it's minus one to hit, so... Has a good war scroll spell. If it if if your opponent makes a mistake and gets too close to terrain, punish him with that troglodon spell. It's a very good spell. Um, so a, a good little piece there. We also have Astralith Bear with artifact Arcane Tome. Um, so we have the Arcane Tome on the Astralith, but I don't think we have any. We don't have any endless spells. So I'm guessing he's casting Mystic Shield with the Astralith, which probably makes sense because all your other spell casts were taken up. So Slon, you're gonna be taken. Horfrost, Empower Celestite, either Blizzard if somebody's close enough, or giving yourself the the ward save. So 
Um, that opens up Mystic Shield from either Troglodon, which you're probably going to be doing Heavenly Frenzy, or from the Astralis. So you do have all your spell casts taken care of here and lots of things to do. We have 10 Warriors with Clubs, 5 Guard, 5 Guard. Those are to help protect your Salon. And then 6 Agrodon Lancers and 3 Agrodon Lancers and a Stegodon. So his, his, his only big melee threat is those 6 Agrodons. Um, the three Agrodons and the ten Warriors, if they're buffed up properly, they can do some stuff, but they're not going to, you know, it's it's not it's not too scary. Uh, so those six Agrodons, he's got to be judicious with where he sends those, and he can get them where he needs to with Heavenly Frenzy. So Stegodon will help score some battle tactics with the Skinks. Uh, it's a nice big wizard. It is fairly tough to kill in Kotal's Claw. So a nice piece there. All wrapped up in what? Probably three drops. Is that three drops? Yeah, 128 wounds. Still a lot of wounds. Not a whole lot of damage output other than the Agrodons. So I'm, I'm very interested to see how he does. Because I like this. I like I like the list. I like all the buff pieces. Um, I feel like it's a little light on damage output other than the Agrodons. But I'm sure Dean's got some tricks up his sleeve. And I'm going to be very interested, very interested to see how he does. So, good luck, Dean. Uh, go do well for all of us Kotal Claw players. So, next up we have a bunch of Fangs of Sotek lists. And I'm going to switch over here. I kind of compiled what is everybody taking between the Fangs of Sotek lists that are all the same. And it didn't really surprise me. Because what we have here is we have a lot of these pieces that build up that core of the Fangs of Sotek list. Virtually everyone took a Slan, Croak, Starseer, Astralith, Starpriest, Guard, and Skinks. That's kind of your, your base loadout for Fangs of Sotek. Um, every single Fangs of Sotek list took the command traits of Lord of Celestial Resonance, which helps you get more summoning points, and then the Artifact Space Folder Stave. So you can drop something out on your next turn within seven inches, just gives you a lot of flexibility, flexible um, tactical options as as you bring something in from summoning. So a lot of the same stuff is used in these Fangs of Sotek lists, and it's a lot of the same stuff we've seen employed uh, throughout the last few months as the Fangs of Sotek lists have kind of been finely tuned. So uh, the things that we see differ a little bit are what is filling up that last few points. The core of Fangs of Sotek lists is pretty much always the same. You have a little bit of points to kind of massage and play with on what you want to uh, do with those final few points. Some people took some Basildons with Arc of Sotex with the, the Snakes Basildon. Very popular pick. It's a very cheap monster. Two up save. Can, you know, it can throw some dice at the opponent and it'll do some mortal wounds. But uh, mostly it's a very great, a very good roadblock, which is kind of what you need in a starborn list. You're you're creating your castle. You're sending out roadblocks within range of your mortal wounds. So as they come in, they have no good targets, and then you can answer with all your mortal wounds. So, um, some people took um, some hunters of Huanche that just gives you some uh, board movement. Uh, Raptor on chargers are always good. They they provide some decent melee punch as well as a, a very good screen. So. Uh, Terror Wings were chosen in one list, and a Skink Oracle on Troglodon was taken on another list. So, um, Grand Strategy was virtually all the same, except for for uh, Macram. He took Magic Made Manifest as his Grand Strategy. Very interesting in that you, this one requires you to have two endless spells alive at the end of the game. Um, so, a uh. I'm going to be interested to see if he if he accomplishes this very often because to me this has always been the grand strategy of if you don't go last in turn 5 you lose the game cuz they'll just they'll take one of your endless spells off the board and then you don't you don't get your grand strategy. If you're running over the person then it's probably not a big deal. You'll have those up, but if you leave a wizard alive or two wizards alive and then then you you're going to fail this pretty easy. So uh, interesting choice there. Uh, spell casting savant seems like the easy go-to, uh, so I'll be interested to see if he if he gets magic made manifest. We do have a lot of endless spells in these lists, as you would expect. Malevolent Maelstrom, even with its points increase and the change in its war scroll, is still a great spell to take in this list because it will add you extra damage uh, throughout the entire game. Every every turn, it 
it will generally explode and do mortal wounds. Even with the change in the, the war scroll, you're still going to get a lot of damage out of this thing. Uh, Chronomatic Cogs was taken in quite a few lists to get, just to give you the extra summoning points, the extra spell cast, a, a nice little utility piece there that will pay dividends over the course of the game. Uh, Grave Tide taking ones, Aether Void Pendulum taken a couple times. Aether Void, I really like that one because you can you can throw it pretty far across the board with the Astrolith, and it will do some damage there. Gets you know it's a good one to get battle tactics with for killing a unit with Endless Spell. Grave Tide, Geminids, and Umbral Spell Border were all taken. Um, so interesting spread there, but I think at the core of our Fangs of Sotek lists kind of remain the same throughout all of these. Um, so let's take a look at some of these lists real quick. See what makes them makes them tick here. This one is from Christoph Pan. He uh, let's see what what's the differentiator on his list. He's got the two Bastildons with Ark of Sotek and his Fangs of Sotek list. And I, this is I, I like this it's very popular uh, in that you'll have some armies that just can't deal with a two up save monster. Especially I think he's got let's see does he have any Star Seers? He has a Star Seer here so. Wait till turn two, and you're going to pop you know, that 5-up ward on both of those, and it makes them a lot tougher now. Now, they're a 2-up save, 5-up ward. They're going to be very difficult to remove. Uh, and combined together, they're going to roll just a ton of dice at you, hoping for mortal wounds. The next list was Cody, and he is also Fangs of Sotek. He's got two Star Seers here. Uh, a Star Priest, basically everything else is kind of the similar. One Arc of Sotek. And some endless spells. He does have Hunters of Huanche in there, so a little bit of little bit of differentiation there, mainly with the extra Star Seer that will allow him to keep that five up ward on the Bastildon for longer, if that's what he's going for. But it also has, I mean, you have a lot of in a lot of spells to cast here. You've got six. Is that six wizards? Well, only five because the Astrolith isn't a wizard in this version, um, but. He does have a lot of spells to cast in this list, and that's going to gain him a lot of summoning points. Um, next up, actually, this was Christopher Gosselin's army. Uh, sorry. The, the next one is Cody. Um, Cody has, uh, let's see, what's he? What's his, his differentiation here? He's got some chargers and some uh, Basildon with Arcasotec. He did take a Star Priest here with Comas, Cos Cosmic Crush. Yeah, so it looks like basically his difference is just the Raptor on Chargers. He he took a, a fewer endless spells, but swapped out a Raptor on Charger for instead of the Arcasotec. So other than that, it looks like fairly similar to everyone else's. All right, what about Frank? Frank's list here. Uh yes, this one. He's got uh, the two Star Seers, um, a Star Priest also, but then he's got ten Raptor on Chargers. Very interesting. This one, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody take 10 Raptor, like a reinforced unit of Raptor on Chargers. Uh, maybe he's been doing this for a while and I haven't noticed, but um, 10 Raptor on Chargers, that is a lot of damage when you get it into the right target. Uh, let's see, does he have Speed of Huanche? Yeah, he has Speed of Huanche, so he can get them where he needs to go. He's got Horror Frost to buff them up. His Star Priest can give them mortal wounds. I mean, this unit can do an uh, incredible amount of damage, especially if you're on an objective. Um, so 10 Raptor Chargers is difficult to get them all in combat, unless you're doing, you know, like that weird formation, which takes forever to line up. But you can reliably get, you know, seven of these into combat. Eight if you're a little bit more risky and just putting the triangle on the ends. So um, either way, it is a ton of dice you're going to be rolling at somebody, and they will stay alive a little bit longer this way, and you'll be able to, to rally them back up to full strength. So an interesting choice there. Ten, ten wrapped in on chargers. It scares me that you know their save is so bad, a five-up save. Having, having you know, ten of them there, but still, I like, I like it. <laughs> a melee punch that you don't normally see in Fangs of Sota. The next one was Macram's list with, you know, Magic Made Manifest as his grand strategy. A, a risky take there. Um, he does max out his hero slots, two Star Seers and a Star Priest, as, as, as the last list had. Lots of units here to just push up the board and create your castle with. And then Endless Spells. 
almost nothing that's going to do anything in melee. Um, so this one all comes down to your magic dominance and how well you do at pushing out endless spells. Uh, you will be able to summon in a ton in this list because you have so many spells. And so he will be able to summon in things that if he, if he needs melee combat, he can. Summon in, you know, uh, Raptor on Chargers, Warriors maybe. You'll be able to summon in what you need if you, if you got to do a melee punch. But this is all on your endless, uh, your spell damage. Last list here is Mr. Urchard. Uh, probably not pronouncing that correctly. Um, but he's got his Fangs of Sotek list. He's bringing in the Skink Oracle with Troglodon. So that's always fun to see on a list. It is a great piece. Doesn't cast a whole lot of spells. It only has the one. But it works well as a utility piece for uh, something that, that's going to get in the way as you're trying to prevent people getting to your spell cast. Kind of trip them up. It will last a long time. But it also provides that aura of minus one damage. Which is good for preventing people from getting too far into your lines as you're trying to cast a bunch of spells on them. Two Star Seers, Croaks, Star Master, and uh, Astrolith. Skinks, Source Guard, Source Guard, some Hunters of Huanche, and Endless Spells. So pretty standard there. His one twist is the Troglodon he's got. So nice little spread over Fangs of Sotek, but you can see how that core of Fangs of Sotek works. And then you have just a few points to kind of give it your own little flavor. So uh, good luck to all you guys at, at the Warhammer Championship. I know y'all are all great, fantastic players. They're going to be playing... Uh, either I think it's eight to twelve games over this next weekend. Uh, man, what a mental grind! That is a lot of spell casts to roll and remember. So good luck to all you you guys as you bring some glory to Seraphon. Good luck, fellas, and we'll catch you in the next one.